On today's show, 10 of 10 for 10 women of the hobby, we have Jess, and I hope I pronounced this right, Minio. Did I say that right? Yep, you did. Let's go. Um, so Jess and I, we haven't met yet, but I've been at Bleaker numerous times. Friend of a friend. I got to give a shout out to my, my man, Jacob Salter, who put this all together for us. Uh, big fan of what you guys are doing at Bleaker. Big fan of you from afar. I, I've, I've tuned into a few of your breaks. Uh, breaks with Jess on Instagram if you're not following. Uh, she does a thing. She's funny. She, 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 she keeps the energy high. So please give her a follow. And I'm really excited to kind of get to know you because in my opinion, you know, Zablo does this thing. Jacob does this thing. But you're the harpy. You're the engine of Bleaker if we're really going to call a spade a spade. So I'm kind of excited to get to know Jess, you know, your collecting story, how you got into the hobby. And I hope people listening today uh, also reach out to Jess, join her breaks, support her uh, at, in her journey in the hobby. So Jess, welcome to the show. It's really, really, really great to have you. Thanks for having me. It's really an honor to be on here um, to, you know, be a member of Women of the Hobby in general and just, you know, to have a platform like this to speak and just talk about the hobby, me, Leaker, Breaks with Jess and stuff that's going on now that people care about. So, so you, you're hustling. I mean, it was Mint Collective. There was like three events at Bleaker the last week. I think you had a children or kids event on Saturday. Do you, do you get any rest or has it just been nonstop cars for like the last two weeks? It's, I mean, I'll rest when I'm, when I'm dead. But no, <laughs> uh, it's, been, it's always nonstop. I mean, I love it. I, I am hustling. Um, but I, I love it. I thrive in this, this environment, basically. I showed up an hour and a half before the trade night started. So they, uh, they, I walk in, they're like, come on, it's bad enough we got to babysit these idiots from 7 to 10. This guy walks in at 5.30. I was kind of hiding in the backyard. Nobody saw me dunk until they watched the episode, though. I love that you guys have a basketball hoop back there. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty right? Good stuff. It's, it's definitely dangerous for us, you know, on yeah. the nice days when we just don't want to do anything. Just take an hour lunch break and just shoot hoops. See, that's the deal. Well, listen, we've had several folks on for our 10 for 10 women in the hobby, and I haven't asked this question yet. And something you just said, you know, like you hear representing women in the hobby, um, it kind of leads me to what, what I'd like to ask you. And we'll get into you, like Andrew likes to talk about your origin story, your collecting, who you collect, the whole deal. But when we say it's 10 for 10 women in the hobby, it actually means something, right? If you, you know, if you guys, if you haven't looked, take a look at Black Jaded Wolf post from Mint Collective with just dozens of people in there. So I guess maybe, and you know, I apologize to our audience for not doing this right from the jump, right from episode one. But what is women in the hobby? What does it mean to you? Is it a group? Is it more than that? And and, and why are we doing it? Like, what, wh- why are you guys doing this? Talk to me about that. So I mean, I didn't create the group per se, but mm-hmm. I do believe that woman of the hobby is more than just the group. Um, there's a Facebook group. There was, I think it might've started with just an Instagram page. And then there was a group chat with all of us in it. That was at least right before the national, I think. Um, and then the Facebook group has gotten a lot bigger as the months have gone on. So woman of the hobby, it's definitely more than a group, but right now, you know, I think that we can collectively just call it, the group of us that have this like, you know, logo behind it and where we all are able to meet up and communicate and stuff like that. So in that essence, yeah, it's, it, we're a group of women who collect. Some of us are card shop owners. Some of us are breakers. Some of us have just been passed down cards from family members and don't know what to do and care about where they go or want to gain interest. Some are kids looking to get into this for a career. Um, I've met, you know, through this 16 year olds who go to card shows and sell their stuff. So it's, it's definitely a group that's given us a platform to chat because there are very, very, very few women in this hobby. So, you know, it's, it's expanded so much and there's honestly, I'd say tens of thousands, if not maybe a hundred thousand, hundreds of thousands of people who collect cards. And I really, truly think that maybe, maybe there's 5,000 women, not in the Facebook group, but in general who actually seriously collect cards and would call himself put, a collector. I, I hate to put you on the spot, like right off the get, but, and, and I'm not going to hold your feet to the fire for this, but like, how would you grow that number? Right. How do you go from five, 10 to 10 K, 10 K to 20 K? Um, honestly, I'm doing exactly what I'm doing. If anything, my weakness is content. 
posting, finding the time to do that kind of stuff. So that's why I'm happy that I have a bunch of other women in that group who do so even more than I, uh, like Mama Briggs, who was on um, all the girls who started it. I mean, Christina from Car Ladders, always talking, just women in the hobby who have content out there, um, who are pure examples of leaders and people who are just doing it. Uh, so, I, I mean, I'm, ex I'm doing exactly what I want to be doing, which is going to shows. I show a presence. I support all the other women. I try to talk like this and just let people know, hey, I'm a collector and you can be too. And if you're scared, don't be. That's kind of what I talked about at the Mint a lot is just people who are looking to get women involved, even businesses, just ask us. It's, it's that simple. So I think just motivating women not to be scared or younger girls not to be afraid of entering a male dominated space. It, it's not that scary. You know, it really is. especially, especially because I have a bunch of guys who have my back huh. and that's, that's the biggest thing. There's nobody who's going to say something to me without somebody else saying something to them because it's a well-respected community. Who do you will find you? <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> they don't know who they, uh, and I, I, I just want to echo that. Like I have a sister, she's 10 years younger. She's graduating college and I've seen just like, we hang out a lot more as, as she's older, you know? just words of encouragement really go a long way, right? Like she's yeah. applying for jobs and negotiating her first salary, you know, just words of encouragement, like go out there and ask for what you think you're worth. Right. Uh, and it's, it's interesting, like how you just said, just, just that, just ask goes a long way. What matters to you? So I, I love that. Are you, are you a New Yorker? Are you from New York originally? So I'm originally from New Jersey. Um, yes. I only moved to New York after I got this job at Bleecker. Uh, I wanted to, I lived in Brooklyn for a little bit, it's back in Jersey, and I moved to Manhattan in October. So I started here in September, and I moved here in October. So, not New Yorker, but I've, I've also worked in New York before, so I might have an accent here and there. <laughs> what accent? Yeah, yeah. so don't, don't have me say water. <laughs> water. What That's it. Listen, I love it. I mean, first of all, Bleaker is a lot of fun. I mean, I, um, I, I love the momentum coming out of Mint Collective. I really do. And, you know, it's, it's, it's part of why, you know, Andrew had, the, Andrew had the idea to do this, this 10 for 10 series with, you know, women in the hobby. Um, and look, content is one. I mean, you, you don't realize how much content you put out there because you're breaking all the time. You know, and let me ask. So one of the things that I think probably, um, you know, women have, uh, you know, kind of like concern about, especially for breaking. And I, I'm here to say it's not a woman. I would have the same thing is, you know, it's like, what about what about uh, breaking something I don't know? Right. How do you play that off, Jess? So this is this is a question I would ask a guy, too. Right. Like, let's just say Thursday, someone's telling you you got to break soccer. And soccer's not. I did. Thing. I did I on know. Thursday. I but did yeah. my research. <laughs> I, I just roll with it just like anything in life you just have to roll with it you know somebody's asking you just me okay i'm just gonna let you guys know like i'm not an expert and that's why i'm gonna ask whoever is an expert hey is this good i mean i know the prism product so i broke prism ufc i broke soccer prism soccer in the same you know live on instagram i don't know who i'm looking for i'm gonna butcher the names but i'm gonna own it by the way sometimes, sometimes i think that's more fun people ask me to break yeah. hockey I could not – I can name, like, three people in the NHL, but it would be a fun break. I'm like, yeah. Sabre, Sabre, Kors, Kapsasov, Rabasov. Yeah. Both I mean, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I know, you know, Connor uh, McDavid, that's about it. There you go. You got that. Sidney Crosby. I could say Capo. Capo was a rookie, I think, two years ago. Oh. Um, again, I thought you were saying know. El Chapo. El Chapo. I thought you saw him. Maybe. In, in his camera there. He's coming to get you, Andrew. El Chapo's coming. No, oh, that, I mean – <laughs> or Hootie. No, Hootie and Andrew are pals. They, no, know, Hootie's the best. Men love and for Hootie. anybody who doesn't know, Hootie's a guy who works here who's the nicest, most genuine dude. Um, he's funny. He's from New York. He's got the big accent. And he's, he's mm -hmm. just – he hangs out here all the time. He's, he's got my back 24-7. Just Google Hootie Vlad TV and you'll just spend an hour, you know, have, some, have a laugh. It's, it's hilarious. It's good content. Hootie Social Club. Hootie Social Club. And Hootie is the reason why people can bring 
seven figures worth of cards to Bleecker and not worry about it. It's like the scene from The Godfather where it's like, you know, if this was somebody else's wedding, all that money in that one little bag, you know, you're not going to, yeah. don't worry about it. No, no one's stealing. They the same kind of thing in, in Goodfellas. They're like, where's the money? Where's the bag? Oh, don't worry. Nobody's stealing that here. It's the same thing. The Who will find you? That's it. You That's the, the deal. Kid. <laughs> Go ahead, Andrew. Yes. What's the origin story? Like, how do you find yourself in cards, right? Is it that... I'll, I'll leave it there because I, I have my my vision, but like, how do you find yourself in cards in New York City? Like currently, or what's the background? What did you have like story? A, did you have a corporate right. job on Wall Street and then you left, and then you've been a journeying entrepreneur, and then you try to find jobs and got fired everywhere you ever went? Were you a trapeze artist in the circus and you were opening packs while you were on the high wire? I mean, no, that, that story was mine. That, that was, <laughs> the latter was mine. <laughs> that was a good one. Um, so actually, I, I think I have a pretty interesting story. Um, everybody kind of is always like, wait, what? <laughs> um, but we'll, we'll start back from when I was a kid. So I grew up in, in Jersey, the suburbs. My dad worked six to seven days a week. So um, all the time that he had with us, so Saturdays, he spent with us, us meaning my two brothers and me. So I have a younger brother, three years younger, and an older brother, three years older. I'm the middle child, only girl. So my family loves sports. We love the Yankees. My dad was a big Jets fan and Cowboys. So it's also where my weird cowboy love comes from. Anyway, <laughs> but so we would spend... Saturdays with him in the morning, he'd take us out to breakfast, and then I would hope that we would go to Toys R Us, but sometimes we would just go to the card shop. So in that, I, you know, I didn't get a choice, and if I wanted something, it would have to be at the card shop. So that's when I kind of started collecting Pokemon cards, and then baseball cards as I got to like 10 or 11, and I just learned to love it through there. So I remember, I remember even watching home videos, and you know, my parents would give us packs in our well, Santa would give us packs in our stockings and my brothers would get packs of cards or weird games to play and I would just play with them. So I was always brought up around that. And then I went to high school, I obviously dwindled out, went to college, I went to Quinnipiac in Connecticut. And I still had an interest in cards, weirdly. Whenever I'd go home, my younger brother would still go to the card shop sometimes and we'd spend a couple hundred dollars on a few boxes again back then you can get like four boxes for 300 bucks and that was still a lot um fast forward a little bit i graduated college and worked in the bronx in hunts point market with my dad who worked in the produce so he worked again commuted from jersey to the bronx every day and uh we worked in a produce market doing potatoes tomatoes and brussels sprouts um i worked as an intern there for like a year and a half and then my great uncle who owned it passed and the world came kind of tumbling down and my dad was like, I don't know what to do. You know, I was like, well, I'll just start a company. What do you mean? I'll just start a produce brokerage instead of us having overhead and going to work. I got you. He was like, okay. So I started uh, Papa Sprout because everybody called my dad like Papa Sprout. It was just an inside joke. So we, I, brokered potatoes and tomatoes and being your own boss at the age of 23 I was bored at night so I spent hours on the internet on YouTube watching breaks so that was in like 2016 and so I got back into carts heavy just spending most of my time getting into breaks going to card shops in Long Island New York Jersey Connecticut just getting whatever packs and boxes I wanted to rip and selling some on eBay and just, you know, hardcore. I was watching Cards Infinity. I was watching Layton. I was just doing everything I could to just be immersed in the hobby. And it was bad because I didn't get sleep, but it's what got me. Yes, be, be real. So like starting a business is hard. Starting a business with family is even harder. Was breaking yeah. cards kind of like your escapism? Yeah. So yeah, that was literally what I did to keep myself feeling like I was working, but sane right. and just had a purpose. Cause I didn't care about tomatoes and to potatoes. Like I didn't even like tomatoes up until this year. So, <laughs> you know, opening cards was kind of my outlet. And then fast forward to COVID, I still had the company with my family. Um, but 
I you guys was... had an, you guys exited. So I actually just exited recently. I just just like dissolved it in September when I started working here. But during COVID, I got into Facebook groups and I was into cards heavy on Facebook. And there actually is a massive community if people don't know on Facebook. I think that's where I see the largest movement of cards. I see million dollar cards sell, sell on Facebook uh, weekly. It's literally insane. And I've met a lot of people through that community. Actually, most of the people I've met prior to working at Bleecker was purely through Facebook. So I was on my buddy's Facebook group and I was just like, hey, I, it was breaking. I was like, I wish I could do this. And he was like, you can. I said, what do you mean? You can break. And his name's Jonathan Rotonda and he was running Roto Breaks and he makes a repack product called Roto Box. So he was like, I'll front, I'll give you the financial support you need and you start breaking. I was like, who wants to watch me? Like I bite my nails. I, I mess up names. And he was like, you'd be surprised. Like, you know what you're talking about. So that's what got me into it. And through that, I went to the national with him. Um, he taught me kind of the ins and outs of how to build a break, how to do team breaks, how to gain a following, just how to stay consistent. And he taught me that, I guess, like my love of cards can bring me somewhere. So pretty much he invested in me and I learned to invest in myself that way. So I started that in 2020. So two years ago and yeah, now I'm here. And now you're riding yeah. the cycles, right? The boom, the little bit of the consolidation, the, the, now the flight to quality. What's, yeah. um, sorry, where this, what, what do you see? I mean, you're, you're kind of on the battleground. You see things, you're in the shop most of the days. Breakers get to see the product everyone wants. What do you think, like, what do you think the hobby looks like moving forward? Do you think it sustains all of these breakers? Do you think there's a consolidation? I'm, I'm curious your take because you, you get to see it firsthand. So I don't think it, so I think the hobby is going to sustain it in general. I think that it's not going anywhere for the first time in many years. I think that it's, it's going up. It might not be going up when it comes to base cards or, you know, graded paper PSA 10, but talking about the community and where we're headed, I do, I do think, see more longevity than previous. Um, when it comes to the product, I mean, I got it in it right before the boom, but I think that a bunch of breakers are gonna be weeded out. I think that there's gonna be a standard that's gonna be set. And I think there's gonna be, I think with this shift in the, the big, like fanatics purchasing of a bunch of of these brands, I think that we're gonna see a major shift and I think there's gonna be a standard there. And I hope that there's, you know, instead of there being a bunch of platforms and crazy stuff going on, I think if we're gonna see consolidation for sure, a little more fair. Right. There's still so many people coming in. Um, you know, somebody reached out to me and was like, hey, I, I wanna be a breaker, uh, but I can't sell this break. Uh, it's like three gun wrist boxes. Um, you know, you wanna get in it. You know, just that, that was the whole mess. I didn't know who the person was. It was a young kid. And I looked at the break and it was like, you know, $3 for the Spurs. And like, you know, the whole break was like 250 bucks. And he only had like 80 bucks in or whatever it was. So I just messaged it back. What's your PayPal? I bought the whole break. I bought the whole break. This way he could break and then see if it was his or not. Or if this is what he wanted to do. Um, and, you know, then I gave out the spots in, yeah, in our Tiger nice. Discord. Just, you know, handed them out and the whole deal. But the best part, Jess, is the night of the break, because he posted a story. Everybody go follow Cage Lawyer. Look what he did. I got 11 different kids message me. Hey, I'm doing my first break. I'm doing my first break. <laughs> For all I know, it's all him. I, you know, like, you yeah. know, that's the fun thing about the internet, right? He could just be doing 11 breaks. It could be the same guy. I doubt it. But it's just funny how that happened. But before we, we jump off and let Andrew, I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to cheers him with soda. I don't know if you're allowed to do that. Let's take a second. And give Mr. Rotunda a little, a little, a little cheers there, because yeah. here it's it's easy after after Mint Collective and after seeing that this is kind of how we're going, and you know I see a lot more you know husband and wife, boyfriend girlfriend, you know partners, everybody you know there, and 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 focus on women in the hobby and diversity and inclusion. That was 2020, you know that was two years ago where he could have been yeah. like Jess, what the hell are you talking about? You can't break, you know, like, what, you know, like this is there's like three women in the whole hobby. He didn't, right? Yeah. And that was two years ago. 
th- think about how far we've come and how far we still have to go. And you have to be the next rotunda people listening to this. You know, if somebody, yeah. you know, t- if you take nothing from what we've talked about, right, with, I mean, Mama's break, Mama, Mama Breaks, who was on, you know, said just get your wife involved, get your friends involved, you know, get your girlfriend involved, right? You don't have to actively seek it out. But if somebody asks, you know, don't shoot it down. You know, there yeah. are plenty of people doing this. And, you know, as we continue to do more of these episodes, I kind of, I change where I go with it, right? I ask, oh, what can we do to go? But the more people I speak to, the more, the easier it is, I realize, we just can't stand in your way. Like, that's kind of, I mean, like, we're, well, that's what I need to learn, right? Like, you know, we, we don't have to be like, okay, here's the money, here's the this, here's, just, just don't be idiots. Like, don't be roadblocks in front of you guys and let you do your stuff. So, I mean, I, I'm loving these these segments. And Rotunda, cheers to you. Nice yeah, job. Yeah, cheers to – we can call him Roto. Cheers to Roto. Roto. And I get to meet yeah. Jess because of you. He could have he could have shut the whole thing down two years ago. So good job. He could have shut it down many times, you know, learning how to do this stuff. And, you know, me, me – I hate – I'm dyslexic, so I do – I run minis on Facebook, and I just would mess up the lists. I'd get discouraged. I'd be like, I don't want to do this, like, some days. He's like, Jess, like – I can help with the list. It's fine. Like, and we've worked it out. And I swear we fought like we were husband and wife sometimes. And he's, he's married. He's an adorable kid. He's totally in love with his life. But, you know, he's, we fought like, you know, it's my business partner now. And he backs me 100%. And he's been to every show that he could make. He was the one recording at the Mint and sent, sent the videos to my parents when I spoke on the panel. I'm like, oh, that's, that's a cool. real friend. Yeah. So, you know, besides him, like, I have to shout out Mark Zab, but like, he gave me, the opportunity yeah. to, to to get this job and 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 I remember one day like you were just saying it was when I just first started here and I started as like a part time retail manager assistant manager and I turned it into this but I think he realized my full potential when one day he just backed off a little bit and he was like I just need to get out of your way to see you do these crazy things I was like well not re- I guess because when somebody's <laughs> not telling me what to do I do. 10 times more because I want to show you what I can do yep. instead of, you know, direction. So that's why I was kind of smiling at that. Cause I, I, there's not getting in my way. It's just, I feel like I have something to prove still. And I, I always want to feel that way. Just what is that though? Like, is it, do you see, is your future in breaks? Is your future, you know, growing bleaker and opening kind of other locations across the country where do you – and don't feel pressure like you have to have the right answer. It can be kind of a little bit more of like these are opportunities I see uh, perhaps. I, I think my future is as, as being a huge breaker and being able to kind of branch it out and do breaks with Jess and have other people break with me. So be this massive breaker and, you know, have a name for myself but also, yeah – run bleaker you know make sure our shop there were social club that were opening in cleveland is running amazingly you know i know we're trying to do eventually the next few years do one in la chicago for jordan like all this different all this opportunity it's it's out there and honestly it's all limitless i I don't know where i'm going to be taken but i want to make sure that i make an impact so that's what I've always wanted my whole entire life is I've learned that you can't make anybody happy, but you can put a smile on their faces. And the only way of being impactful is to make a difference and go outside your comfort zone and just keep going. Because if somebody can see that you're a kind person, that you're leading by example, then you've made it. And the you money can't make come anyone happy, but you could put a smile on their face. Did I get that right? Yeah, correct. I like that. So like, if your kindness, if you're kind and you're doing things out of the goodness of your heart, you're most likely going to make somebody smile. And that's all that matters to me is that little change that you're going to see in people's life. So that's why I love this hobby is because it's all about the kids. It's all about my customers. It's all about the support and the room for growth and the room for knowledge and just spreading that out there. You know, why do you guys open up cards? Why do you? I mean, because I'm a gambler, I'm a degenerate gambler, and you know, I'm hoping to, you know, hoping yeah. to chase my first hit of crack to like yeah. the first time I 
broke a box and got a huge hit out of it. That's what so I'm You can't doing. make me happy, but you put a smile on my face, Cage. That's right? it. You got I excited. Smile you got little, that was the deal. Well, he knows about the hit of crack. I mean, he did one right before the show. But here, here's the deal, right? So, so he's smoking it. It's just nuts. So, but I got to ask you because, look, some people who we're interviewing are new to this. Some people have come in, you know, in the last year or two. Some people have been here 10 years. You bring a different background, which is, you know, while you were, you know, doing Papa Sprouts, you were free time at night watching breaks and maybe getting involved in breaks. Mm-hmm. Now, that was years before the hobby kind of blew up here. You know, maybe that's 2016, yeah. 17, you know, which is, you yeah. know, which, by the way, for 80 percent of our listeners, that's before they got in. For 80% of the people at these shows, it's before they got in. You're like an old-timer in the hobby being here five years. What kind of breaks were you watching? What kind of breaks were you getting into? Like, what was your thing, right? Was it, was it flawless? You know, was it, you yeah. know, revolution? What, 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 what was your thing? What was your jam? So, like, I wish I could go back and say that it was Bowman. And I, because I, if I had 2016, I'm sure I'd have a gold Tatis auto, like, you know. But it was, um... Whatever I could get my hands on. So Chris from Cards Infinity in 2016, you know, museum. I loved the look of it. Gypsy Queen. Um, there was still Tops Tribute back then. There was Innovations Basketball. Um, Elements Black. There was used to be Tops. He was still very Tops Black football. That yeah. was cool. Black and gold football. That was yep, the coolest. Those were cool it cards. Like thick, thick card that had like a fake gold shield in it. I was like, wow, it's so cool. Um, triple threads has always been my jam. And honestly, back then, because I went to the National in 2016 with my dad and my brother, my dad bought a case of flawless baseball and a case of flawless football. And back then, the cases were maybe a thousand bucks, 900 bucks. And that was big. And he used to tease us being like, oh, I'm going to let it marinate. But eventually, he'd open it <laughs> and give us each a card. So I still have my, I got a Jameis Winston um, out of 25. Bloods. Bloods. Yeah, as a rookie. So it's a, maybe it's a, it's Emerald. I'm going to let it marinate. And, uh, Are you telling Yeah, and he, I am. I am. No. So actually, I, I, yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> yes, I'm Italian. So yeah, he, uh, I was into, I guess, the stuff that's not worth anything now. But that, it didn't matter <laughs> back then. Because you didn't know if, you know, you didn't know what was going to be worth anything back then. You know, right. NT baseball was, so cheap and now it's it it hit over i think at one point it was over a thousand dollars a box for this year's yeah it's, it's still crazy. much cheaper than the other sports because it's not licensed but it's definitely way more than it was yeah um yeah i mean you, you don't know I, I'm pretty much everything now is expensive i mean i'm paying 150 dollars for a box of clearly donruss football and telling everyone what a bargain it is because more than double that. now. Thank yeah. you to my LCS who gave me two boxes at 150. And wow. Ian got a waddle, a waddle auto. He got to waddle away, waddle, waddle. I love that. was going to play this week. I was going to play this week. Jess, I'm curious. And I have my theory on this, but I'm not going to say my theory until you, you give me your answer. You, What was your favorite trade night or event at Bleecker? Ooh. Yours. Um, I think it was my first one. It was the Hulu premiere party. Um, what? When Dave the Hulu the so Dave East the, um, the Dave you know, the, East came the Wu Tang so yeah so the series premiere of uh, Wu Tang came out on Hulu, and it was so last minute it was crazy it was, it was I think it was like six days before and this I just started work, working here, and we were messaging Hulu asking for some support. I just remember them two days prior saying, yeah, we'll get the whole, almost the whole cast in. I was like, wait, what? The cast of Hulu is going to come here? Like, we're a car job. I'm confused. But they made it happen. And we had all the guys here. Dave East rolled up. We had catering in this whole entire social club. I was like, oh, my God. We had a projector in the back, champagne bottles popping. DJ Ski came and gave a huge speech with, you know, Dave East. And there was just so many people. And... I just remember we were also selling wax. So I had like a little pen and paper. I was just marking down the sales because we weren't built out yet. But I think that was the most fun just because I got to see, you know, the mix of all worlds. So DJ Ski seeing what he's doing now with cards is crazy. Um, 
seeing just the the vibe that you know Mark kind of has instilled in us that the card world is going to be a mix of everything. So music, sneakerheads, um, you know, any no. any influencer is only. welcome now. Collectors only. This is a collector. You can show. only collect cardboard. Um, <laughs> just so bringing in that, that was a really cool vibe here. And then besides that one, I'd say it was a close second when Jimmy came here um, from Kentucky Roadshow. That was just fun. Everybody was just so happy and chill. I think, Cage, that's the first night I, I met you. Yep. I'm pretty sure. Um, was, it, was he near the pizza? Yeah. And you said, I'm, we, I'm have always- other guests, we have other guests coming, Cage. No, let, I we, think in the beginning. Let I everyone have first pizza. before you have second. I was still like semi-skinny Cage in the beginning. Now I'm like, give it a pizza. Where's the pizza? Why is it not here? <laughs> I was more Diet Coke then. I was more hitting the back of you know, the coolers. But, but yeah, I, no, I didn't I, even in the back. That guy Jimmy, he is just always smiling, man. I mean, how do I was you not thinking that too. Always yeah. huge ear to ear, which is great. And think of that, Jess. Right? You know, where where the where where the hobby, the industry has taken all of us. You, you get to you know, you get to do a Hulu cast. You know, a couple of weeks onto the job, meet them all. You know, DJ Ski, do this whole deal. But think about, you can do it, right? If you build it, they will come. Even if you want to fake it. You have the whole cast. You got Davies. You got all these people there, and you're like writing down with a pen and paper who, who bought yeah. what because the PLS yeah. system hasn't even been built out yet. I mean, it's pretty crazy 100%. to think about. Yeah, it's I pretty mean, crazy it, to think it, about. It's nuts. It's really crazy just to see where we're at now, how far we've come. We're also where we're going because just knowing the partnerships and the future that we have at Bleaker is just like I did fake it till I I'm making it now, and still every day it's like oh, well, I don't. I don't know how to talk to this person, but, you know, I mean, we have the new, so Zero Cool and Jackass just made cards. The auction's going out soon, and I was just on emails, and we have um, on the Pop Insider or something, it says Bleaker Trading. Yahoo Finance, we were in last week, and it's like, so, you mean Johnny Knoxville and I might be going, like, live together or something? Really? Nice. To like, break. No, nice. Like, no, just like, so like we are going to do a break, but I don't know. I think we're going to try to pull in some talent, but the fact that I'm not even in that conversation, I'm like, oh my God, just, this is so cool. I, I started with just the cards and now it still has something to do with cards, but it's just like you said, fake it till you make it. Now I'm here. I'm like, Be on wow. The for pranks, please. Because you don't oh, know I love what's going to happen. I love it. I, I, I don't want to be pranked. I'm, but I'm ready. Does Zabro love it? Check Probably your seat. Not. Make sure they didn't put an airbag in your seat before you sit down for the break. Just check it I'm first. Like, see if it... <laughs> Mark will probably be like, I'm not coming in that day. I know things are going to be crazy and like kooky, but you have fun with it, Jeff. He's always like, you have fun. I'm like, okay. Well, like, just, listen, me... good for him because that really is what, I mean, you know, hobby, industry, whatever you have, your business, whatever we're going to call it. We're all drawn to it because it's fun. We had fun as kids doing it. We're having fun as degenerates doing it now, breaking these products. I mean, it's, it is – I say this to Andrew all the time. I'm like, you know, oh, we just closed a nice call. Here's a business deal close or a sponsorship. You're having fun. You know, it's great. The other actors, you know, like as long as we're still having fun. If you're not having fun, close up shop, right? Yeah. And I guess that's cool to be, you know, making money, having a business where you're enjoying yourself. I mean, Andrew makes fun of me. I'm a Disney guy, but whenever there's construction in Disney World, when I walk past, they have like little quotes of Walt Disney. And one of the things, I'm going to butcher it, I'll paraphrase it, but he says, you know, if you find a job you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Walt Disney. Yeah. Right? I mean, look what they're doing. Isn't that great? I mean, you don't have to work with tomatoes. I I know it was great working with dad, but, you know, I mean, it's cards now. Yeah. Yeah, My my story is similar to that too. Grew up in the family business, worked with my dad. I think now, and I kind of get this vibe from you, it helps you, right? Go, growing up in a small business, you fight for every single customer, right? You treat them yeah. like they're like they're your own. And if you take that into cards, and I, I've seen your breaks, you do. That's more important than pronouncing Yarmary Yagers or Joggers name the right way. You said it right the first time. Oh, really? <laughs> it's a sign yeah. of jogging. Yag. Yag. Yarmir Yager. You did good, no. man. And I a thousand percent agree with you. And that's what I know my dad's going to watch this because my parents are super proud of me. And, you know, I've, I've been afraid of speaking my whole life. And I, this is my first time actually on a podcast ever. Um, really? Yeah. You cannot so tell. thank you guys. You're doing great. 
Um, but that's like my dad, he called me on the way to work today and I just chatted with him and he's the reason why I'm a hustler. He put his whole life into working and it's so that he could make his family happy and give us what we needed. So, you know, it, it was hard working a family business, but it, it was worth it. And it still is, you know, I got that connection with my dad and I'm my, everybody says I'm my dad's twin. We have the same laugh. We, we like to bust people's chops. And when everybody says I'm like my dad, I, I just, I get chills because he's, he's taught me to be kind to everybody and just to work so hard because that's what we do. You keep your head down and you push through. And like, as long as you're happy at the end of the day, and as long as you love, you're good. So like, again, the family business, yeah, potatoes, but yeah. now I'm where I'm at and I can't be more thankful. Just the support that he gave me and my mom and now the people who support me in the hobby is, you know, it's just really special. So hi, mom and dad. <laughs> I know you're going to watch this on hi, YouTube. Mom. You probably said it's the whole entire oh, family. God. Hi, Karen and Vinny. <laughs> like, so, you know. what, about the, what about your brothers? Hi, Nick and Mike. I, Nick go. actually still collects cards. So his, his goal for us in the future is to open up a card shop together still. Um, there you go. There you so go. Maybe, She's Jan Brady. She's not saying hi to the – she's the middle child. She doesn't have to say hi to them. They, they tortured her from both sides. It's no they good. did. They teased me. <laughs> they still do. The card store with your brother. I mean, that would be pretty awesome. That would be pretty cool. So I'm curious. You said you collected Pokemon cards as a kid, but then yeah. you, when you got back to, into it, you collected more baseball, I believe. Baseball, What do you yep, collect everyone. now? Where have you landed now? Is it everything? Is it non-sport? I'll leave it there. So I collect uh -oh. everything. I'm, yeah, I'm a hoarder. Um, that was the biggest issue of moving into Manhattan. Uh, so where am I putting all this? More storage locker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's an issue. Uh, under my bed, there's no clothes. In my closet now, I have like two, I had room, like beautiful shelves, and it's just filled with wax and cards. Um, not a lot of wax, more cards because I, I rip. Um, so I collect everything. I've been trying to stay on the path of what I love, which is baseball and football. And I like opening basketball. Um, I'm getting into F1 slowly just because Christian here is a fan and a fanatic. So it's cool watching. And that's about it. I mean, I like opening up stuff that's not sports related. So Cage, what card did you bring in, um, on Thursday? That was really cool. Who was it? I had a pay, I had a Pele, I had a Pele with me. A Pele no, it soccer was the card. Sports. Goonie, mm -hmm. the Goonies, oh, the, the Goonies, Goonies card. Yes, I had yeah. a Goonie. Yeah, the truffle Chunk. shuffle. Chunk, the Chunk. The truffle yeah. Shuffle. So like that kind of yeah. stuff, I love it. You know, like I don't have too many cards like that, but I do hopefully want to get a random card of maybe one of my like an M and M auto would be cool. That'd be sick. That would be really. You cool. know, that, by the like, way, take a pause for like a second. That. Think about this. This is a collector. I brought in a se almost 70-year-old, 65-year-old Pele rookie that I paid way too much for. And she's like, no, no, not that. Not that. It, the, the chunk auto from Goonies. That's the cool one. That one. It's amazing. See? To be and fair, that's why Cage, I bought your it. reaction was the same, though. Your reaction was the same. When we were <laughs> I love that card. Minute, you're like, I got my grail. That's it. I love my card. This is amazing. And he, yeah, and he also taught me a little about bargaining. You know, you, you – you went in there, you know, you told the kid a certain amount. He's like, nah. No. And you just no. had to you, you had to come back yeah. and just go for it. It's just here you go. Take take it. Jess, take Jess, my money. You're, you're a nineties kid nineties kid? You grew up listening to Eminem? Yeah. Oh yeah. Eminem I was on well, it's my now CDs, but yeah, I can wrap the real some shady with drinks or without drinks in me. So Ooh. word for word. I gotta imagine an Eminem auto is it, I can't I can't imagine he signed a ton. Like just kind of I, his personality. I've never looked it up, to be honest. Um, I probably well, should find one. Listen, I have a friend named Stan who has been trying to get his autograph for a long time, and he wouldn't sign for him. He wouldn't even sign for his little little brother, Matthew. <laughs> that's, 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 that song. I remember that on the, was it the Grammys. He sang that. It's so dark. It was. He was only six years old, waiting in <laughs> blistering cold. Four it, hours waiting for blistering cold. Down. Yeah, I, I think that's no. how it went. Jess, have you That's seen uh, Defiant Ones? 
I, I talk about this documentary to everyone, but it's like it's Dre, but but they talk a little bit about the come up of Eminem and that. So it, it's on Netflix, four part series. I'm gonna watch it. I, I love binging when I'm sorting at night. So when I'm sorting oh. my after breaks at like 3 a.m., I just throw something on. The way I am, I went for a run yesterday. It was listening to Eminem, The Way I Am, kind of throwback. It, it brings you back to like the 90s, simpler times. They wouldn't even play him on the radio. He said they said he was too he was too much was invoking violence. Is what he they was said. corrupting children. He was corrupting yeah. children. Explicit. By the way, the way I it's am, true. good instrumental, it's good true. instrumental, very good instrumental. Well, look what he did to you. I'm corrupt. <laughs> yeah, but just you. going off that, so like I would love to have more non-sports cards, but basically I love baseball. I'm Jeter fan. Um, I just got my Mike Trout one of one back that I pulled during COVID out of a Gypsy Queen box topper back, like PSA 10. I just, it's so cool to me. Um, football, I still collect, you know, I PC Patrick Mahomes. Um, and then he's not a cowboy. I, I'm, no, he's not. So I, my first big card was actually, um, my PC Jackson Mahomes. <laughs> TikToks and NFT TikTok videos of him. I'm like, that's rough, man. That's rough. <laughs> I heard a joke. It was him and I said, whatever, Juju Smith got traded to the Dolphins. And he promised not to do any more TikTok videos. But the joke was, I, I forget where it was. He was like, yeah, but the first TikTok video he made with was with Jackson Mahomes. They immediately just said, we don't want you anymore. Like, yeah, <laughs> be tough. Jackson Mahomes, oof. <laughs> But uh, I mean, he's got it rough, man. I mean, he's living in a shadow. I kind of know what it's like. I mean, you know, I have to show up every day and I'm in Andrew's shadow. And, you know, I, I get it, man. He's like Patrick Mahomes. I'm like Jackson Mahomes. You know, it's, it's an interesting thing. I, I got I to gotta <laughs> tell you, I thought your favorite show would be Don Diego's. And here's why. And we've been to a few of these, or of the, like the bleaker event. And we've been to a few bleaker things. But... When I saw how all out she went for, like the, what is it, like the, the, the window storefront, all of the, like, I feel like girls in the hobby add so much aesthetic. Cage, help me out here because I'm stumbling over my words, but like, when yeah, I saw I'm going to let you photos, drown. I'm going to let you drown here because I don't know where you're going. No, I'm just kidding. I know what you're saying. You're I can help. In the hobby. I can help. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, please. So, actually, that, I was going to say that event, but. That was actually the first event that I took on. So working here, I was fully in charge of it. Laura, so Don Diego is actually amazing. She is the sweetest woman in this hobby. And, you know, she just came, she came to the last big train that we have. And I'm like, we need to get dinner. Like we really need to, she stays in contact and she's blowing up. And I can honestly say that working with her was an absolute pleasure. And she made my first, she really made my first event. And she made it go so seamlessly. But I understand what you're saying to women in the hobby. We do those tweaks, the little details. So, you know, her face was plastered on the wall, on the, on the, um, our big bleaker trading logo on the window outside. So on Christopher street, her face was there and I helped her design that. We designed it all. We did the little place card. I printed out a bunch of fake trading cards with her name on them. The back was bleaker and she signed them. And I actually have one that's PSA slabbed. And so that was cool because we went all out and I wanted to do something different. I was like, let's do a collector showcase because I want you to showcase, like not just be like a woman in the hobby, like coming here, which is cool, but I want her to be different. I want her to be able to show like what she does because she has the coolest content. She knows what she's talking about. If you ever watch her video, she's, she's an expert on Pokemon and she keeps with it and it's all the time. So I, I let her, you know, we did a showcase and that was, that was awesome. It was hailing and people still came. And then we did a trade night where she broke like a $30,000 box on whatnot. And we were just all having fun. And that was, it was just so cool. And everything was very precise. Yeah. Like to the neon sign, to the small cards, to just the two different collector showcases versus the trade night. That was honestly my favorite, but it's the one I put the most work into. She didn't want so, to say it. She's being modest because she can't say it was my favorite one because she's the one who because I did was it. behind the scenes the whole thing. I get it. Yeah. I get it. But it was the biggest teaching experience too because I, I did the merch. We did a merch drop. 
Um, I was working with Mark and Allegra, who does all of our visuals. Um, I was working with them to make t-shirts, hats, figure it all out. And that was just really interesting. And that's the stuff that I didn't know how to do prior to Bleaker. I never have thrown an event before, except for that was my first trade night. And Precise is I a good word. Epic. Yeah. Precise, crisp. Uh, Christina is another one. I mean, like you look at Mint and how she put that show together, Cage, you talked about it, it was clean. I think our definitions of clean are different, but like it was clean. Uh, and I think that's- uh, I mean, I clean like people showered was what I did. Yes. Like. It was but a like cleaner show than it's national. Clean. Like when everything is polished, all you, you, you think about all the details. Um, for a side, so. I mean, I would think it was very clean, except for during my panel, it was Christina was a moderator and Mitch from Bullpen didn't have his shoes on. So I don't know if he cleaned his <laughs> feet Mitch. or if that was like actually cleanliness, but shout out to being authentic 24-7. <laughs> Listen, Mitch. yeah, I mean, give him, give him that. Andrew's authentic 24-7 also. Check this guy yeah, out. I like it. I so much. Yeah, he doesn't know. I'm he's cool going to look it. up Mitch now. He's going to, you know, he Andrew, he's a Birkenstock wearer, you know, so he's okay with his toes out too. You know, he's crunching. I'm, I'm picturing Mitch from old school, and I can't get it out of my head. Mitch, I'll send Godfather. you a picture of. Yeah. I'll send you a picture. I, you know, my I, they took a picture of me on stage, and my friend zoomed in. They're like, what's going on? I'm like, I don't know, but he's rocking it, so. <laughs> uh, Are his toenails funny. cut? Not you can't not zoom in that much. Can't, can't oh, you zoom can. In that much. Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's but he's a legend. He can do what he wants. You know what? What's New York like? Like, has it come back from the COVID thing? Like, are people moving back? Is the city? It's bumping. Yeah, um, it New is? York's back. Yep, New York is back for sure. Um, it's hard being a retail store here specifically. So just a little bit of backstory. Like we opened up during the pandemic. We only started being a full nine, 12 to six shop, seven days a week in I'd say December because we were just getting our bearings, but it's hard because we're in the West Village and there's not a lot of things around here that young collector stereotypes would go for, you know, like yep. sports stuff around here. It's mostly shopping. Um, it's, it's a very uh, gay area, as in there's Stonewall, there's Cubbyhole, there's a bunch of historic gay places around here, which is not, I mean, I'm gay myself. So like, I'm, I'm like, all to that, doesn't matter. No, like literally across the street to the left, like there's, there's, there's all these shops. interesting yeah like you said no rules so you know there are, are sex shops all over the place yeah. um yeah. Just london right down the block ignorant right? when i was talking about gay people so but you yeah no it's listen, london, you, not you, know the, you know the place cage yeah london yeah of course you could buy a full leather he actually outfit had a, buy... the bag there when he came in yeah. on thursday he came in That's with it, like, I, a bag the whole, I go said, shopping there myself 100 percent. it's literally right down the block right between the they subway sell, and you the, know. And, if you're into leather stuff, male, woman, yeah. anything, Full they on. sell it. Like Pulp Fiction, you know, the bowl, mm -hmm. you know, they got it right in the window. I'm telling but you. But that is yeah. what makes New York, New York. You know what I mean? Like a, a shop in, in Miami is going to look really different than a shop in, in New York is the melting pot. Yeah, but I Literally. think it's tough for us to get people who are Foot collecting traffic. cards. Yeah, because, you know, it's it's that. And then really high-end restaurants. So unless you know about Bleecker, which a lot of people are learning they were right. here, you know, we're not, they're just, we're not getting the traffic that's just walking by and coming in. It's, we're going to be becoming a destination store. So yeah, we're accessible by train, by car. There's not a lot of parking, but I think that people who are coming to the city are coming to Bleecker for Bleecker, um, not just walking by and seeing us, which is different because everybody's like, oh, you're in the city. It's so popping. I'm like, no, it's kind of hard because <laughs> it's not just that, oh, there's this big, crisp store it's like no we're a tiny space and you kind of got to look for us so yeah it's a tough it spot it's a tough location yeah. but it's definitely back i'm well, super excited i think our outdoor space in the back is gonna be awesome for the summer and spring so i'm excited that we're back for sure the store I used to go to in the city andrew by comparison was literally equidistant from the stock exchange and the world trade center 
you know, it was like two block walk from either way. So, I mean, lunchtime, it was frequented, you know, when LeBron came out in 03, it was frequented by, you know, stockbrokers who were taking their lunch break and were opening up boxes like crazy looking for LeBron. Um, was, so, was that Camille, you're you're right? Yeah, Camille, read, I've been there. Have, have you ever read Liar's Poker or like long-term capital management, Cage? Me? No. Oh. I don't read. Book, but, if, if any book's good enough, they'll make a movie out of it. And I can get in and out in two hours. The stockbrokers in the financial <laughs> space, they were huge DJ and gamblers. And yeah. I, I yeah. could see that, that, that niche really catching on. And it talk, in long term, is it, yeah, long, it's long term capital management when genius failed, is the book. It talks about how these guys, I mean, they would make arbitrage on like these huge yields on treasuries. But during their lunch breaks, they would play poker, gamble, uh, buy cards, do all this stuff like, just to like pass the time. So. That's what they were doing. A lot of people buying Makes cars, sense. a lot of stockbrokers. Andrew, you'd love currently on the corner of Bleecker um, and Christopher is wh- Whalebone. No, no. I'm the not Broth Place. No, the Broth yeah, Place have, is delicious. So, but, but no, but right now they have a, um, it, it's bananas, like your hat from whatnot. The whole thing is decked out in bananas. It's like a banana display. It's the craziest yeah. thing. I don't know what the hell it is. There's just bananas. It's a comedy it's a comedy club. They do comedy, and they I guess they have a different um, – people come in every few months, and they just change it over. So right now it's something to do with bananas. I don't know. It's like the funny line. Look at there that. There you go, the banana hat. That's, That's a hat. You, you, you got to go right to that, right to the corner there, banana it up. It's bananas everywhere. It's bananas. Andrew, where, where are you from? Like this is so uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> where, where is he from? Yeah. Andrew, we want to know where you're from and where you live. Well, that is two very different questions. Where do you live? Two currently? very different questions. What state? Andrew, where do you live currently? Uh, the state of Quintana Roo in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so I'm, I'm, moving to, I'm moving to Florida. Yeah. I was actually living in Brooklyn when COVID hit. I sprained oh. my ankle the day COVID hit, and Rudy Gobert was talk, touching all those mics. We were playing oh, basketball yeah. at the YMCA on 14th. Dude, I was giving people the business. That was, that was, like, that was, more, that was my peak basketball stage. But, and then COVID hit my parents. Now. Bong. Terrible right now. <laughs> my parents went to Mexico and like one month turned into three months, turned into a year. And with COVID and all that stuff, my mom works remote. My sister works remote. I, I do this. My, my dad's chilling. So Why not? But I'm moving to Florida. It's what just, part? It's Boca. Okay. Sierra right. La Boca Raton. Nice. My parents live in Anna Maria Island right now. So nice. they moved yeah. from Jers? Uh for the next like they do six months on, six months off. So Snowbirds. Yep, that's what we call them. Snowbirds. I love it. Luca Nation, Jess, can you tell people once again where they could follow you, where they could support? Uh, we're big fans of Bleaker, big friends of Jess, Jacob, the, the whole squad. It's it's good people. Like it's, it's really good people. It's fun. If you're ever in New York, send Bleaker Trading a DM, send Jess a DM, and stop in the in the store. So, could you tell people where they can find you, Jess? For sure. So you guys can follow me on Instagram, Breaks with Jess, um, or even BreaksWithJess.com. I have Twitter as well hopefully get TikTok soon or bleaker trading. So make sure there's a C in there. So just like right, right there. there. Yeah, over sure. That's it. Or, is this trading. where we're, we're putting the Statue of Liberty here? <laughs> right there. It's like one of those. <laughs> like right yeah, there. Liberty, right there with, so, with the C. Um, I, get, I leave the C out sometimes too. Yeah. So we're on uh, our website, even bleakertrading.com. We're on network. Uh, we do live breaks there. We go live on Instagram. I break live on a Facebook group called Roto Breaks, as well as Breaks with Jess on YouTube. And yeah, we go live on, we're going to be live on Loop 2 and just every platform we can be. We just love it. So you guys give Going us a follow. Going to any shows? Going to be at like I'll Long Island at National in Dallas April? Show. Dallas oh yeah, show. National Great. 100%. Jess is very go. approachable, guys. Go ahead, say hi, take a picture, put it on your post because she's she has trouble with the content. So you make the content, tag her, and boom, it's instant content. You know what I mean? And say I appreciate hi. it. Say there you I go. I appreciate come it. Come say hi. Yeah, come say hey. Come to our trade nights at Bleaker. I'm always here. I'm here five days a week, if not seven, because I can't get enough of it. And <laughs> just, yeah, just come hang out. And thanks for having me, guys. Seriously, this was an awesome, awesome way to start my week. 
Mm. Thank you, Jess. Can, and now you can do a podcast. You do one a week. Anybody wants to have Jess on here? She's a natural. Can't believe this is the first know. time. No way. There you go. Thanks, it Jess. Was. Thanks, guys.